said, we're gonna have a look at the laws of indices. Again, there's a few of these to have a look at. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're gonna go over these first three. So write three squared times three to the power of five as a power of three. So when we're looking at uh, indices here, there's three different ones we're gonna have a look at to start with. Now this first one is when we're multiplying. Now there is a quick little rule for this, but I think it's important to understand why. So three squared is three times three. Now three to the power of five is three times three, five times. So three times three times three times three times three. And what we're doing is we're times in these both together. So really, if we have a look at that there, actually what we've got, look, is a load of threes getting times together. And if we count up how many we've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven from left to right. So I could just write that as three to the power of seven. And that is our final answer there. But if we get rid of all of this and have a look at how we get that just from looking at the numbers above, if we have a look at these powers here, the power of the first three is two, the power of the second three is five. Well, if we just add those together, two plus five equals seven, which is the power that we got down here, three to the power of seven. So our quick little rule here, when we're multiplying with powers, we can add the powers together. This only applies, however, if the base numbers are the same. And that word base number there, if I write this question out, three to the power of five, three to the power, um, power of two, this three here is the base number. So because they're the same, we could, we could just add the powers together. This, however, wouldn't work if it was three squared times two to the power of five. Okay, there's no little quick rule for that. We can't add the powers together because these base numbers now are not the same. So we're gonna be having a look at questions where the base numbers are the same. Let's have a look at our second one. So there's the first one to remember. When you're multiplying, we can add the powers. Okay, so in this question, we are dividing. So that's five to the power of seven divided by five to the power of the three, written as a fraction there. Remembering that fraction line means divide, and it wants us to write it as a power of five. Now again, there is a quick trick for this one, but if we think about what this means, we've got five to the power of seven, which is quite a lot of fives on the top here. So five times five times five, that's four, five, six, seven. And we're dividing that by five to the power of three, which is five times five times five. Okay, so if we have a look, each one of these fives on the top is getting divided by a five on the bottom. So if I have a look at this one, this five here, if I cross that one out, I can cross this one out as well, because that's five divided by five, which equals one. So they cancel each other out. I can do the same with the next one. So there's another five on the top, another five on the bottom. That's another one cancelled out. And another five on the top and another five on the bottom. So actually all we've got left, we've now got no fives left on the bottom, but we've got these four fives on the top. And four fives being multiplied together, we can write that as five to the power of four. Okay, so that's an explanation of why we get the answer. Let's have a look at how we get that from the numbers. So those numbers on the top, we have five to the power of seven, five to the power of three, and seven take away three equals four. So when we're dividing our little trick there, we can just subtract the powers and we get five to the power of four as our final answer. Again, it is just, that's just our little trick, a little explanation as to why we can do that. If one's getting cancelled off the top and the bottom, then it's just the same as taking away. So seven taken away, three equals four, five to the power of four. Let's have a look at one more. Okay, so two to the power of four, all to the power of three, and it wants us to write this as a power of two. Let's think about what this means. Two to the power of four is two times two times two times two, and it wants us to do that to the power of three, or to cube it, which means to times it by itself three times. So if I was to write that out again, so I'm gonna times that by itself, itself is four twos there, so two times two times two times two. That'd be if it was squared, but it's cubed, so it's another four twos, two times two times two times two, and there's a lot there, but if we count them all up, we've got four up to this point, another eight, and then 12. So it's actually two to the power of 12. And there we go, there's our final answer. But let's have a look again how we get that from the numbers, because we don't actually need to write all this thing down. Let's get rid of all of that. So how do we get that from these numbers? Two to the power of 12 is our final answer. Well, if you have a look at the powers there, four times three, four times three equals 12. So when we've got these brackets going on, we can just multiply the powers to get our two to the power of 12 there. But again, you don't have to write that out in the big long way that I did. As long as you remember that little rule there that we can just multiply them because of that, we get two to the power of 12. So we've got three little rules there. We had something like two to the power of three times two to the power of five. And in this scenario, you can add the powers. That's something like two to the power of five divided by two to the power of three. 
and in this case you can subtract the powers and if we add something like 2 cubed all to the power of 5 in this case you can multiply the powers but again don't forget you can have a think about it the long way just to make sure that you understand that now, I've got a few for you to have a go at um, so here they are the pause the video there have a go at these six and I'll go over the answers in a sec okay so answers for these 3 to the power of 4 times 3 to the power of 7 well we add the powers so that's 3 to the power of 11 going downwards 5 to the power of 8 divided by 5 to the power of 3 so we will subtract the powers so we get 5 to the power of and 8 take away 3 is 5 so it's 5 to the power of 5 and the next one write 3 to the power of 5 squared as a power of 3 so we can multiply the powers there so we get 3 to the power of 10 on to the right hand side again 5 squared times 5 to the power of 4 we're going to add the powers so 5 to the power of 6 on to the one below we're going to divide so subtract the powers we get 4 to the power of 3 and 2 to the power of 8 to the power of 3 we're going to multiply so 8 times 3 is 24 so 2 to the power of 24 all right let's have a look at some slightly harder ones where some of them are getting blended together Okay, here we go. So 3 squared times 3 to the power of 5 all over 3 to the power of 3. And it wants us to write it again as a power of 3. So all the base numbers are the same. They're all 3s. And we're going to have to deal with this in a slightly different way because we've got a multiplication on the top and then a division to deal with. So whenever I've got a question like this, I just like to tidy up whatever's on the top before we have a look at what's on the bottom. So let's tidy up what's on the top. We have 3 squared times 3 to the power of 5. So we can add the powers there. So we get 3 to the power of 7 on the top. Although we're still dividing that by 3 to the power of 3. But now we've tidied up the top, we can apply that second rule and we can subtract the powers. So 7 take away 3 gives us 3 to the power of 4 as our final answer there. Okay, we're going to have a look at one more. Okay, slightly different question here. It says write down the value of, and then we've got 5 to the power of 7 times 5 to the power of negative 3 all divided by 5 squared. So write down the value. Now value doesn't mean to write it as a power, so we're not going to have it as something like 5 to the power of something. We don't know what that power is. But instead we're going to write down what the actual value is. So if it came out as 5 cubed, for example, we wouldn't write it as 5 cubed. We'd work out 5 times 5 times 5, which would be 125. So 125 would be the value if this question did come out as 5 cubed. But let's have a look and see what it actually comes out as. So we've got a little bit of extra stuff going on here as well. You might have noticed there's a negative power on the top there, negative 3. But we're going to just deal with it in the same way as we would with normal numbers here. So on the top, I'm going to tidy that up. And we've got 5 to the power of. I'm going to do the working out to the side here because we're going to add these powers together. Now the first power is 7. And I'm going to add to that the second power, which is negative 3. So I'm just going to follow my normal number rules here. When we've got adding a negative that's the same as taking away, so we've got 7 take away 3 to do, and 7 take away 3 is 4. So on the top there, I'm going to have 5 to the power of 4. Okay, so when you've got negative powers here, don't forget just to write it out as a little sum to the side so you can see what's going on and take that out of your head. And we're going to divide that by 5 squared. And again, now we're doing a division. We've got 5 to the power of 4 on the top, take away 5 to the power of 2, so 4 take away 2, it leaves us with 2. So our final answer there is 5 to the power of 2, but it did say to write down the value of this. So 5 squared, we just need to work that out. 5 squared means 5 times 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. So that is our value there of this um, 5 squared that we've got. Right, I've got some of these for you to have a go at. Don't forget just to apply your normal rules with, with your numbers. Um, one thing that could also happen, which I'm not going to go over on this particular one, is we could have had a negative power on the bottom. So let's just think about this to the side, how that would actually work out. Let's just make one up. So something like 5 squared times 5 to the power of 4. And let's imagine we have 5 to the power of negative 3 on the bottom. Now we'd still tidy up the top. We'd get 5 to the power of 6 on the top divided by 5 to the power of negative 3 on the bottom. Now this time when we subtract, the sum we'll do for that power on the bottom is the 6 on the top, and we're going to take away the power on the bottom, which is negative 3. So just thinking about that to the side, 6 take away negative 3 becomes a plus here, and 6 plus 3 is 9. So actually we would end up with 5 to the power of 9 for this particular one. Okay, so just be thinking about your numbers, depending on what comes up on the top and the bottom in those powers and where those negative powers are, if they are there. So let's have a look at, uh, for some for you to have a go at. Okay, here's four questions. Have a go at these, and I'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one. On the top there, we'll add the powers together, so we get 3 to the power of 8, and we're dividing that by 3 
squared. Taking away those powers, we get three to the power of six, and it does say to write it as a power of three, so I'd leave my answer just like that. Onto the one below, five to the power of four times five to the power of three is five to the power of seven, and we're dividing that by five to the power of negative two. Okay, so we've got a negative power on the bottom here. I'm gonna subtract these powers, so the sum that I'm gonna do for the power is seven, take away the negative two on the bottom, and seven take away negative two is seven plus two, which is nine. So my power of five is gonna be a nine, so five to the power of nine. Onto this top right, writing this as a power of two. So on the top, let's uh, do this little sum to the side. So we've got adding the powers here when we're timesing. So seven add negative three. Seven add negative three is seven take away three, which is four. So on the top, I'm gonna have two to the power of four, and we're dividing that by two to the power of two, or two squared. Now we can subtract the powers, so we get two squared as our final answer. And the final one here says write down the value. So this time we're not gonna have it as a power, we're gonna see what we get. So on the top there, we've got three to the power of four times three to the power of three. Adding those together gives us three to the power of seven. And we're dividing that by three to the power of five. Again, dividing, we're gonna subtract them so we get three squared. And three squared has a value of nine, three times three, which is nine. So I'd actually write down the value of that. So just take note of the language and be careful. Now that is it, I've got one quick one to show you here. Okay, so it's a bit of a special one. It says write down the value of three squared times three cubed all over three to the power of five. Let's just have a look what we get here. So if we tidy up the top, adding the powers, we get three to the power of five on the top. And that's also being divided then by three to the power of five on the bottom. Now it says write down the value. If I think about what this is as a power of three though, if it's a power of three, three to the power of five divided by three to the power of five, we subtract the powers. So that's five take away five and five take away five is zero. So three to the power of five, take away three to the power of five gives me three to the power of zero. Now three to the power of zero here is a special one when we've got something to the power of zero because if we think about what we've actually got here, we've got a number on the top and it's being divided by the same number on the bottom. And what happens when you divide any number by itself? Let's just think of an easy number, just three on its own. Three divided by three gives us the answer one. Anything divided by itself equals one. So therefore, three to the power of zero must equal one, okay? And this rule applies for everything here when we've got something to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is gonna equal one. It doesn't matter what I pick, whether I pick five to the power of zero, that's gonna equal one. I could pick anything, 49 to the power of zero, that also equals one. Okay, just thinking about this logic here of anything divided by itself has to equal one and that's how we get a power of zero. So I'm not gonna give you any questions on this, but it's another little rule to have a bit, a bit of a think about. If you are asked to find something to the power of zero, the answer is always one. And just be careful not to mistake that power of zero as a degree symbol, it's not, it's a power of zero there. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Again, if you like this, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one when we have a look at some uh, negative and fractional powers.